If you watch this channel a lot, you know that we like to focus on products that not only perform well, but look good too, especially when it comes to talking about high-end products. Now you may criticize us for this, but let's face it. If a product doesn't look good, the chances of it finding its way into your system greatly diminish because there's just so much vying for our attention nowadays that like a dating app, a product's looks may be the thing that gets you to swipe right and learn more. I say this because it's what happened to me in today's review. So strap in, hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already, because today we are talking about Cambridge Audio's Edge Series System. Now the Edge Series from Cambridge consists of three pieces. The Edge A, which is an integrated amplifier, the NQ, which is a network streamer and preamp, as well as the W, their stereo power amplifier. Now we're focusing on the NQ and the W today. And together, these two make for a very, very strong pairing and make quite the argument for why you may want to go with an all Cambridge Edge system. Now, if you're a subscriber, you know that we've also reviewed Cambridge's entry-level network streamer preamp in the CXN V2, and I liked that piece a lot, but I did have a couple of concerns with it, mainly its lack of HDMI as well as analog inputs. Two things that have been rectified with the NQ, but rectified at considerable cost. Now I chose to demo these two as a system because I just don't think that customers are gonna go out and buy the Edge NQ or W separately, at least not initially, which is why we are reviewing them as a system to see how the two work in concert with one another. Now, in terms of being able to test this system, we used a wide range of loudspeakers from our Q Acoustic Concept 300 bookshelves, our Klipsch Heresy Mark IVs, Wharfdale Denton 85s, and even Bowers & Wilkins Signature Towers. Obviously, we connected the Cambridge Audio Alva turntable for records, and that's the turntable we've just reviewed on this channel, and I'll link to down in the description below. But we also used the Technics 1210 GAE that we had for a little bit. And because the NQ has HDMI connectivity, this enabled us to connect it to our LG 8K TV, which allowed us to stream both music and movies, albeit in stereo. And of course, for music streaming, we rely on Tidal. Now setting up the Edge system, specifically the NQ, is pretty straightforward provided you first download the Stream Magic app from Cambridge Audio. In fact, there really isn't much that you can do by way of setup without the app, as it allows the NQ to not only see your network, but your locally stored music as well. It's also what enables you to connect to your streaming music services of choice. In fact, about the only thing that I didn't have to rely on the app for was connecting the Alva turntable via Bluetooth to the NQ, because straight out of the box, upon initial power up, the two pieces saw each other and just worked. And a real quick word about the Edge NQ's remote control. I absolutely love it. I believe the fit and finish is amazing and it feels great in the hand. And I wish more companies took this type of pride when designing their remotes. That said, it really is very basic and only allows you basic controls like source select, volume up and down, play pause, things like that. So you really do need that Stream Magic app handy at all times. But all of that aside, what does the Edge system sound like? On a whole, this system is warm, weighty, if not a little bit romantic, but it's also just a tad conservative. It's the, it's the type of sound that reminds me or conjures up images of say a dark study with a roaring fire and me cozying up next to it with a glass of scotch after having to endure a long day of YouTube comments. The bass therefore is rich and weighty, but it lacks a little bit of impact at times. So it's much more the type of bass that rolls like thunder rather than cracks like lightning. So maybe it's not going to be as exciting with all source material, but it will definitely seduce you. Midrange is much the same. It's definitely warm, rounded, a little bit weightier than most, but definitely erring on the side of seductive. And I liked this. I did, especially with vocals, as I found performers, be it music or movies, to have a great sense of dimension, at least in my space. 
And like the bass, there is texture and nuance here, but I don't know, I, it gives me that the mid-range kind of comes off as what I anticipate a lot of listeners would think tubes are supposed to sound like, only there are no tubes present here. But to be honest, I haven't reviewed a lot of tube amps or preamps recently that have felt as lush as this combination. So is the NQ and W together? Are they neutral? No. But is that necessarily a bad thing? To me, absolutely not. Highs are most definitely rolled off and a little bit soft here. Cambridge has put the emphasis on air and spatial separation, but in doing so, it's as if they've applied a sort of filter, like a, like a hard cutoff at the extremes. And as a result, you don't have to suffer any digital nastiness or sibilance at high volumes, but it also limits a little bit of the system's, well, sonic contrast and top end energy. And so while cymbals still sound like cymbals through this system, they have the right air, texture, and decay, they do lack a bit of that kind of metallic zing, that, that metal reverberation is just simply softer here. Dynamics as a result are dependent upon two things, your choice in volume as well as speaker. Now the W has the requisite power to drive most any loudspeaker on the market today with great control, but it's conservative nature when mated with say an equally conservative speaker and say the Bowers and Wilkins signature towers is likely going to lead a lot to be desired in terms of dynamics, unless of course you're willing to turn things way up. Now, if you pair the W with a more efficient loudspeaker, like our Heresy Mark IVs, for example, you're gonna find that dynamics, they improve dramatically, if not become a little bit more exciting. Now, which one is right is largely going to be up to you, the individual. I know which one I preferred, and it was the latter. And like Dynamics, the soundstage does seem to be largely loudspeaker dependent. When we paired this with the Wharfdale Denton 85s, the soundstage was far more controlled and intimate in comparison to our Concept 300s, where things widened and blossomed quite a bit. Regardless, you just can't seem to get away from this system's sonic signature, which is simply just more laid back. And as a result, the soundstage itself seems to exist several feet behind your speaker's front baffles. And as a result, this is a soundstage that you're going to relax and get lost in, rather than one that reaches out and grabs you because this system just, it just doesn't do that. It really doesn't matter what you choose to listen to through this system, be it analog or digital, as the system on a whole just has a sound. But I attribute this to the amplifier more than I do the preamp streamer. If anything, the NQ is the better of the two pieces here. If you want to curb some of that lush sound that I have described, I assure you the NQ is far more neutral than the W, if anything, the NQ outright elevates the W in this situation. I welcome and even applaud the inclusion of HDMI here with the Edge NQ, but its implementation is a little bit buggy, or hit or miss, because it worked great with our Hisense and Sony TVs, but was prone to glitches and handshake issues with our LG. And this is the first product that hasn't worked flawlessly with the LG, whereas we're kind of used to handshake issues with the Sony. So it would appear that once again, the HDMI struggle bus is meant to roll right on. Now, while you could operate the CXN V2 manually, you just can't do that to the same degree with the NQ. For the NQ really doesn't have any manual controls apart from a dial for source select and volume. This means that you always have to have the remote or more specifically the app handy. To which I ask, why even have physical controls at all? Why not just make the big, bold, display on the front, a touchscreen. And speaking of the app, the app is good, if not a necessity in order to control the NQ, but recent updates to the Stream Magic app have made it come across or feel a little bit more clunky than what I remember when I used it in conjunction with the CXN V2. And speaking of the CXN V2, one of my criticisms of that piece was it lacked analog inputs. Now the NQ has analog inputs, but it lacks a phono analog input. So if you want to use a turntable that isn't say the Alva TT, you are going to either have to make sure that the turntable you choose has a built-in phono preamp, or you're gonna to have to supply your own third-party one. And as for the W amplifier itself, I need to warn you, this beast gets hot. Even at idle, after a few minutes, this sucker heats up. 
So after spirited listening, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you A, have this thing in a well-ventilated area and away from prying hands or pets' noses because it just gets that warm. Now, of course, we compared the Edge system to our name, Unity Atom. I know you're shocked. Because on paper, the Atom and the Edge system offer a lot of the same functionality, but I know that the Atom is an integrated music system, whereas the Edge is a separate system. And depending on who you are and your personal taste, you may prefer one over the other. I know in our testing, there were quite a few instances where I thought the Atom sounded as good or outright better than the Edge system, and on a whole, it was just a little bit easier to use. We also tested the Edge system against the Musical Fidelity M8XI, which on paper is another integrated amplifier versus separates, but the two are relatively comparable in price. The Musical Fidelity does have more power output and as a result just exhibits a lot more control over virtually any loudspeaker that we connected to it in direct comparison to say the Edge W but the M8XI lacks the built-in streaming prowess of the NQ, so you're gonna have to decide for yourself which functions or functionality are more important to you and then whether or not each product or one or the other is more budget friendly. So all of those comparisons aside, you're probably wondering what do each of these components sound like on their own or which one sounds best when not paired with the other. And like I said earlier in this review, I do think that the sonic signature of the Edge system is impacted the most by the W amplifier. So if you don't want that warm, rich, call it tube-like sound, definitely probably skip the W amplifier because the NQ on its own is definitely closer to the neutral standard, if you will. It's still very smooth, very refined, if not just a little bit polite at the extremes, but on a whole, it it attempts to be more neutral than the amplifier. And this was true when I paired it with other amplifiers that we have in house, like my Crown XLS Drivecore 2 amplifiers, as well as the XTZ Edge amplifier. Now, I'm not saying that one was better than the other. I'm just saying that it, it gave me a sense for the, the larger neutral nature of the NQ compared to it with the W. And so to wrap it up, the Edge system from Cambridge Audio is one of the most beautiful design statements that I have encountered in all of hi-fi. I absolutely love the way that it looks in our room, and I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty sad when it's not connected. All that said, its sound is a little bit of a mixed bag for me. I don't dislike it, but I'm not always in the mood for it. And so it becomes a bit of a specialty system, which at its asking price is kind of asking a lot. So that is my review of Cambridge Audio's Edge system. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And while you're down there, I have a question for you. What is the most beautiful piece of hi-fi gear that you've come across, and did it sound good to you? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Ring the bell so that you are notified when new videos come out. And if you use any of the links that Christy leaves you down below, know that that is your way of showing your support for our channel and the work that we do here. And we thank you very much. If you're looking for another way to support this channel, consider becoming a member. You can click join right down next to subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audio File. And that's it. So remember, the only person that has to like the sound of your system is you. Happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you on the next video. Bye. <laughs> that gets a clap. <laughs> your, your reaction to like... I forgot. Sub subscribe, subscribe if you're not like, already. <laughs> like, you're not? Yeah. How are you not subscribed? It's because I forgot to. I forgot what I was <laughs> I supposed know. to say. Anyway, that was funny. I yeah. liked it. I think yeah. we can move on. You think?